Thank you very much. We turn now to topical questions. Question number one, Mike Rumbles. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to figures showing the average income of commercial farms decreased by 48% in 2015 to 2016. Cabinet Secretary Fergus Ewing. Uh, Presiding officer, I, I agree with Mr. Rumbles that whilst these reductions were not unexpected, they were still disappointing. And as a fundamental part of the rural economy, it's important that agriculture performs well. There are a range of complex reasons behind the decline in farming incomes, primarily the lower revenues received for crops and livestock. Finding solutions to all of this is key, which is why we've appointed four industry champions to explore all the issues and take forward our vision for agriculture. They will also have a role to play in the working group currently being set up as per Mr. Rumble's amendment in the debate on farming earlier this year, which will consider principles and policy for future, future rural support. One bright spot in these figures is that costs also fell and that shows that our farmers and crofters are working hard to improve their efficiency. This government will continue to support them to do this and to help diversify income streams as well. Mike Rumbles. Presiding officer, these are catastrophic figures and they're compounded by the Scottish Government's continuing failure to deliver farm payments on time. The average farm business income in this survey was just £12,500, which included support payments of £38,000, with a third of businesses making a loss. Less than half of farm businesses have had this year's payments processed by the Scottish Government so far. This should all have been done by December. On taking over ministerial responsibility for this shambles almost a year ago, the minister said that getting this right was his number one priority. Does he accept responsibility for the continued failure to deliver what is due to our farmers? Hey, I accept the responsibility that befalls in my portfolio. Um, however, as Mr. Rumbles knows, or should know, and as I've already explained, the reduction in net farm business income arose primarily because of lower prices. Now, that is simply a fact. But what is also a fact and should be made clear is that the CAP payments, the timing thereof, does not impact on these net farm business income figures. If Mr. Rumbles was seeking to imply that it did, then I'm afraid that is incorrect. The payment window for this year's Pillar 1 payments, uh, uh, of course, takes us to June, to next month. And I can assure Mr. Rumbles and all members that uh, terrific efforts are being made in order to achieve these targets this year. And indeed, a deal of progress is being made. And of course, I rightly regularly report, uh, presiding officer, to the a rural committee of this parliament to answer questions on these matters. But I do share the headline concern of all members about the reduction in these incomes. And what they show above else in conclusion, presiding officer, is the absolute essential nature of the EU financial support payments to farmers and crofters. And I hope that that is a point around which we can all agree. Mike Rumbles. Presiding officer, we can't have sloping shoulders here. The NFU said on Thursday that the viability, let alone profitability, of every Scottish farming business relies on three cogs working together. Costs, markets, and government support. It concluded that these are conspiring to threaten the very existence of many farms. And I would have thought the Cabinet Secretary would agree with me that this is a crisis. And I could just say that to date, less than half our farm businesses have had their payments processed. How confident is he? He mentioned the June figure, the June date. How confident is he, with only half done, that they'll reach the 95% of payments before the end of June, before the European Union takes out infraction proceedings against the government? Our farmers need this support money, and it is not forthcoming. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, of course, Mr. Rumbles is uh, well aware that uh, these are extremely serious matters, and one which I take absolutely thus. Uh, it is reasonable to point out, however, something which he has omitted, namely that precisely because of the difficulties uh, in the administration of these payments, there has been loan schemes issued 
to farmers uh, last year in respect of LFAS and in uh, respect of uh, Pillar 1 this year and LFAS this year. And these loan payments have been substantially appreciated by a great many farmers that I speak to. Uh, in response to his second question, we are working extremely hard to ensure that payments of Pillar 1 are made in accordance with the are substantially made in accordance with the timescale as set out, and I'm quite sure that the rule committee who deals with the detail of this matter will have uh, uh, the opportunity to ask me about this matter in the next few weeks. Marie Todd. Thank you, presiding officer. From his earlier response, it appears to me that the Cabinet Secretary agrees with me that the biggest risk to farming incomes, as this research makes plain, is Brexit and the loss of EU funding. Can he advise what guarantees he's had from the Tories at Westminster on future funding for Scottish farming? And has he had any success at persuading them to keep their promise to address the convergence issues? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the, the biggest risk of all to farmers in the future is that the EU support uh, is not matched post-Brexit according to the UK's plans. And I regret to report to the member uh, that uh, despite having asked uh, orally, in writing and in person, UK ministers George Eustace and Andrea Leadsom on numerous occasions to confirm uh, that the UK government's plans are, post-Brexit, to match EU funding, worth to the rural economy £500 million a year. I've had no answer whatsoever on that matter, despite the fact, presiding officer, that there are, by my calculations, less than 24 months to go before the onset of the post-Brexit responsibilities. So we are completely in the dark about this because... Although EU funding is entirely a reserved matter, we have received zero information from the UK government on what their plans are post-Brexit to support farming and rural payments. On the second point that she raises, which is about convergence funding, the convergence funding to the sum of £190 million was granted by the EU precisely because Scotland, and only Scotland, qualified uh, on the basis that the payment on average per hectare was the lowest uh, in the UK. Uh, despite that fact, that funding has not been passed on to Scotland uh, uh, and therefore uh, we have repeatedly asked the UK uh, to pass that money to Scotland because it was intended for Scotland's farmers who receive far, far less per hectare than farmers in England and Wales. Uh, and I do hope that that's a policy that the Conservatives uh, will support when we continue to demand that this money is repaid to Scotland where it rightly belongs. John Scott. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I begin by declaring an interest as a farmer and a food producer. Presiding Officer, the First Minister and the Cabinet Secretary have both already apologised to Scottish farmers and crofters for the delay in the 2015 CAP payments and these apologies are, of course, welcome. Notwithstanding the Cabinet Secretary's response to Mr Rumbles, can he tell Parliament how many farmers' incomes in the financial year 2015-16 were affected by the later-than-expected payments and what impact this had on the dramatically reduced income figures under discussion today across Scotland, but particularly in our less favoured areas and crofting communities? Secretary. Uh, well, I, as I have made clear already, presiding officer, cap payments, the timing of cap payments to farmers does not impact on farm business income. Uh, I do accept that if payments is later than expected, later than was delivered in previous years, obviously there is a delay in receipt of payment to farmers. That's a matter of fact. Mr. Scott fairly points it out. That is precisely why, as Cabinet Secretary, uh, I have uh, instructed, and we are in the course of arranging the latest loan scheme on LFAS payments and why I arranged the loan scheme last year. And incidentally, presiding officer, that's why the loan scheme last year uh, issued, in most cases, uh, the majority of payment due, a substantial majority of payment due earlier than had been received before, precisely so that farmers and crofters were able uh, to manage their financial affairs uh, as they receive the funds by and large in the first fortnight of November. It's precisely because of that aspect, presiding officer, 
that this government decided to issue a loan scheme so that that money would be in the hands of our farmers and crofters and thereby in the rural economy of Scotland. But I take all these matters extremely seriously as I think Mr Scott realises and will continue to work day and daily as I have today, I have yesterday, I had on Sunday, on Saturday and every day. Uh, and I do personally reply to farmers who email me about their complaints uh, to say that they will be dealt with. I hope that that doesn't trigger another several hundred of, uh, of emails, but I do, take, uh, <laughs> I do take these matters very seriously, presiding officer, uh, and we are working around the clock to sort out these matters. Thank you, and that concludes topical questions.